Hey guys, I gotta be quick because I already woke up late, but welcome to part 5, the finale if you will. This one's actually very special to me as a theatre kid, I really feel like Les Mis is the gateway. You know what I mean? You have to see it if you're a theatre kid. So today is my first time seeing it, I'm really excited, I'm meeting up with Danielle. But before that, I'm getting a new tattoo for my sleeve and I'm really excited about it so I'll take you with me to that, totally. For the look today I've got like a double denim Marius, which is fun. Um, I do have a bow tie, I literally cannot get it on so I'm gonna need someone to help me. But um, I'm also really excited because Bonnie Langford is playing Madame Tenardier for a limited amount of time. I love her, she's a star, she's an angel, she's just the moment and I'm so excited to have been here while she's doing that limited run. So I'm just really excited that I was able to see her for her unlimited run before she does the concert tour because I can't go to that unfortunately but Beatrice from Book of Mormon is joining it as Cosette I believe. So excited for her. I'm so excited for her because she's lovely and she deserves the world. Right so I'm gonna head out and I will take you with me to the tattoo shop first. Well I've got a suitcase to drop off but then to the tattoo shop. So after I dropped my suitcase off it was straight onto the underground where I made it to North Greenwich and to the tattoo studio or a 94. It's like right down the road from the station and the vibes in here were great. Everyone was really friendly, the staff were really lovely and this was the stencil and here I was ready to get the tattoo and here's the finished product guys. I'm so so happy with it. It looks so so cute and with the trans colours it's like my first sort of quote-unquote meaningful tattoo. I mean all my tattoos have a meaning and a passion behind them. But yeah, after that it was time to head over to the Sondheim where I met up with Danielle for Les Mis. I'm here! I got here eventually. I'm so out of breath. <laughs> it's like 20 past two. Yeah, something like that. Um, I'm really excited to see Bonnie Lightfoot though. I know, and Jack Yarrow. Yeah, that is so exciting. Um, so I'm going to go to my seat, I'll show you my view, maybe film a bit up there if I have time. But we'll definitely see these guys in the interval. After such a long time of making theatre content, I'm finally where it's at. I'm so excited. So this was my seat, I was in AA26 of the dress circle and while it was restricted, that was how it was sold to me, so it's pretty great. So I was really, really late getting here as you saw, but I've got the rest of my costume on. I've got my little, my little baby blue bow tie and my little French pin that I delivered to Danielle's house because she lives a lot closer to London. Body Lab is amazing, I'm loving the show. I'm not gonna lie, the people behind me are really, really irritating. But we live, and we laugh, and we love, and I'm having a great time, and I'll catch you afterwards. I forgot to say, I did get another pin match. I'll show you my collection at home at some point. Because I got a lot of merchandise, and I, this morning I had to sit on my suitcase to close it. So that tells you everything by the way. This is the guy, this tattoo. I love him so much. Acting's about to start. And I'll catch you later. I found you. You found me. I want to get the castle. So that was that. It was time to say goodbye to Shake Shack, it was time to say goodbye to Danielle, and it was time to say goodbye to London. For now, obviously, you know, I do go back a lot, but after spending a week here, I just, I know I'm gonna miss it, and this week went by so quickly, almost as quickly as that tube train, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, no, it was time for my train home, and it was really jarring. Hey guys, I am so overdue a haircut. 
cut. And if you've read my community tab, this video is coming out a bit late because I haven't been feeling very well. Um, thus, I didn't have time to film this part of the video. But now I'm pleased to announce that I am concluding my five-part London series with my Les review. Now, as you know, we had some special casting when we went. I'm saying we, because Danielle obviously kind of went with me. Um, we had Bonnie Langford as Madame Thenardier and Jack Yarrow playing Marius. They are joining the arena tour now with Beatrice, who we are saying goodbye to in Book of Mormon at the end of this week, and I'm really upset and sad but I'm also so so proud of her. Now unfortunately I can't go to the arena tour, there's just too many venues that are abroad and too far away from where I live so I'm just sending my love out to the cast that's going to be joining and coming together for such a monumental show. But yeah it was really special to see some different cast members, we also had a couple of understudies so I'm excited to talk about them. Obviously one thing I'm kind of sad about is that I can't compare the understudies to the main actors because I have haven't seen the main actors but it is always really really nice to see understudies. So speaking of understudies we had Rosie Church as our eponine for the afternoon. So our cosette was Lulu Maypairs and I just want to talk about them real quick because they are two characters but while they don't connect that much they really really like they have such similar stories the whole thing just kind of comes together in a really nice little messy package so obviously we get it that Eponine and Cosette grew up together Eponine being the daughter of Madame Thenardier and Mr Thenardier <laughs> and Cosette being Fontaine's daughter who was taken in by them out of pity I mean they really just wanted money but that's why they treat Cosette so bad because she's not their own daughter they don't really have to care about her per se they just kind of have to keep a roof over her head keep her fed with whatever food they can find that's probably not food but you know that's how it goes but you really see the mistreatment and the difference in how they're treated when they're children and let me just say those child actors were incredible um I don't exactly know which ones we have unfortunately but just know that they were great. I mean there are loads of child actors in shows. They have to cast a lot of them because they can't do loads of shows a week. They literally cannot do eight shows a week. Um, it is illegal but you know I feel like any child actor who has made it to a West End show is going to be chef's kiss. But yeah this comes into contrast when the two girls grow up. Eponine becomes the sort of girl in the background, the one that doesn't matter. Whereas Cosette gets taken away, she gets rescued by Jean Valjean who made a promise to Fontaine when she was dying. But also Jean Valjean's the mayor, like of course they're really really not poor at all. <laughs> but that must be why Eponine is so so bitter towards Cosette. It's not just because she's grasped Marius's attention, it's because Eponine used to be that girl, she used to be the person that would get all of the attention and now that she has a crush on this one man he can't see her as that special girl because she isn't Cosette, she's not special. Eponine's a complicated character for sure, I mean she cares for Marius obviously but she's very, I don't know, she gets very very petty and slightly annoying when it comes to dealing with Cosette because she sees her as some sort of rival and I think that was also the case when they were children so it's like nothing's changed but I kind of like that aspect you know nothing did change apart from them sort of swapping roles I have to say though these two girls were absolutely incredible both of their voices were stunning obviously both of them looked stunning but Lulu and Rosie bounced off of each other really well in the way that they are both definitely rivals like you can tell and you can feel it and yeah I just really liked them together and while I don't know a lot about the show in general because this is kind of the first time that I have watched it all the way through without any breaks I can say that they were very talented. Now Millen van Wardenberg played our uh, Jean Valjean and I love Jean Valjean because he's always been so hot I, I can't I can't explain it. You you get it. You understand, or I don't don't act like you don't. And I feel like he's at the perfect age and has the perfect look to be able to pull off showing how Jean Valjean ages throughout the show because obviously there's two major major time skips and then there's the epilogue obviously and for theatre you would obviously don't have time to do like full prosthetics and that. So with what they can do 
Personally, from where I was sitting, I know I was sitting quite far away, it looked really good. He was absolutely perfect. Jean Valjean isn't a villain, he's not a bad man, and he knows he's not a bad man, obviously. The only reason he gets arrested in the beginning is because he was trying to feed his family. And he got the most of his sentence because he tried to run away, but obviously that was because he wanted to get that food to his family, um, which just makes it even sadder because, as I said, that added to his sentence and made it, I think it was 20 years? Five years, but what you did, the rest because you tried to run. Yes, two, four, six, seven. Yes, no, anyway, he was fantastic. He's a very conflicted man. Um, obviously, he does what he thinks is right. I mean, he becomes the mayor of the town for a reason, you know people see him as a good man. But it's not up until he meets the bishop at the very, very start in the prologue where he decides to change and become an honest man. And I think you really, really see that switch when he really realises that he can make a really good life out of himself if he just does what he believes is the right thing to do. Obviously, his vocals are strong, very, very vocally strong. I absolutely love him. I mean, you have to be vocally strong for a show like this. But he's a strong man. He is a very good man. His relationship with Cosette, especially the child actor, you know, you could really tell that they spend a lot of time with one another on and off stage, especially when she is that young lost girl who has never really had proper parents that have cared for her, um, which is probably honestly why she grows up to be a little bit cocky. Also, just to add to that, you can tell he's such a kind heart, and that's really something that you need for Jean Valjean, you know. He has to be a kind, loving, fatherly figure, and he definitely is. Now, Stuart Clark was Javert, and on the contrary to what I said about Jean Valjean, they didn't age Javert that well. The makeup kind of reminded me of, like, over-the-top pantomime makeup, like, really angular lines that were very, very dark really dark eyebrows, very, very over-the-top villainy. You know, he's obviously the bad guy in Jean Valjean's story, but he's not the bad guy in his own, you know, and he actually has a pretty sad end, obviously ending his own life, mainly because he sees that Jean Valjean has become a good man, and I feel like when he feels the need suddenly to take his own life, that's him realising that what Jean Valjean did for his family was an act of kindness. Kind of like Jean Valjean, Javert is simply just doing what he thinks is right. Now quickly talking about Jack Yarrow, I'm not going to touch on him for too long, just because in my opinion Marius isn't like a big big character. I mean he's big in the story of Eponine and Cosette and obviously the revolution he is the leader. Empty chairs and empty tables also breaks my heart, fuck you Les Mis. But other than really being like the odd stage sweetheart, he doesn't really have that much to him. But obviously he does take part in the revolution and I will say that the barricade scenes and how they do that with the lighting and the effects, it's so 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 good. I will not spoil it if you haven't seen it. If you haven't, I can say this now, what are you doing? But yeah, he was absolutely phenomenal. He has a lot softer vocals than, say, Javert or Jean Valjean or, like, any of the other male characters, really. Like, he's very clean-cut, he's very handsome, he's very charming, and I just love his softer vocals because that really plays into his character. But I love that, obviously, he has this other side to him with his friends where he's very rowdy and compassionate and he loves his friends in that sort of brotherly bond way, which is why Empty Chairs and Empty Tables is so heartbreaking, lame is. Why did you do this? I'll never get over how heartbreaking that song is. And honestly, even Eponine's death is really heartbreaking. And the realisation from everyone else on the barricade is so heartbreaking, especially with Gavroche's death as well. Um, he's also a really, really talented child actor, absolutely loved him. Again, I don't really know who he was played by, but he was so, so good. Such a sassy little kid, I love Gavroche. Obviously what happens to him is terrible. Obviously he is played by a slightly older kid compared to Eponine and Cosette, um, but he was also really, really good and he got the whole audience rowdy and he's just a really fun character. And he's also the smart ass that out Javert, so... 
Can't hate him. Now we're on to the stars of the show, Luke Kempner and Bonnie Langford playing Madam and Mr. Tenardier. I love these two. They're essentially literally just the comic relief of the show. Even when they are mistreating Cosette, when obviously they're really, really doting on Eponine because she is their daughter, they're still so funny. They are absolutely hilarious. Bonnie Langford is wild, but I love her. And she's just as incredible as I imagined her to be. Both of them had killer vocals. Obviously, they do put on slightly funny voices. In my opinion, if there's any character that should be pantomime me, it's these two. I like any comic relief, especially in a really dark show like Les Mis, and these two pulled it off perfectly. Their chemistry and the way they bounced off of each other is insane. Honestly, Madame Tenardier is kind of like the man or the trousers in the relationship, and you really see that, and that's kind of the joke that's played off a lot. Um, but yeah, that concludes this video. I just loved everyone in this cast. It was so, so jarring, but also so, so amazing to finally see this production on stage, and I'm so glad I had an opportunity to go. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and thems and theys, this is going to conclude my full week in London. I cannot believe I'm finally saying this over a month later since I started filming this series. That is insane. Um, next time you see me, I'll be seeing the Book of Mormon, surprise, surprise, and it will be the final time that I see Beatrice as Nabalungi. So it's going to be a sad, sad day, but I've also got some other little treats in there. Um, but I'll see you then.